Without further ado, here's the complete collection of LeBron James' Greatest Stories, Part 1. We play in different eras. He's, he's an unbelievable player. Yeah, he's one of the best players in the world, uh, if not the best player in the world. When you start the comparisons, I think it is what it is. You know, It's just a standard measurement. You know, and I, I take it with a grain of salt. He is a heck of a basketball player, without a doubt. It was like when, when God made him, he was like, all right, I'm going to give you all this. I'm going to take everything, but I'm going to take one thing from him, and I ain't going to give you no line. <laughs> but I'm going to give you everything else. That's what I tell Brad. I'm like, he gave you everything. And I remember, I don't, I don't know if I even told nobody other than my close circle. I remember it was um, it was a play we was trying to run, and one of our teammates forgot the play, and Brian told him the play. He said, if you miss these free throws, you know who's going to win it. All right, now, what makes it what makes it worse, what makes it worse is this. Bron says, I'm going to get to this spot and shoot. But if I get here and any one of them is flinching off of their man, I'm beaming it to that man. Right here. And we've been spoiled. Yeah. He's, it's, just been, it's just been remarkable what he's been able to do. I feel confident because I'm the best player in the world. It's simple. For years, I always caught so much flack, of, you know, us being the, the better team or whatever we was at, at one point in the, in the Eastern Conference Finals and people not realizing, like, it's, it's, it's tough to get past this motherfucker. I don't care who you are, you know what I mean? And see him come to the West and be able to do the same thing, it's, it's, it's a testament to his greatness and, you know, his IQ to the game when you, when you go out there and play. You know, um, I remember um, – you said 16 when we went to the East Conference Finals. Um, we won game three and four, and it was like a whole nother mindset click for him. And the players to coach against, and one most difficult in going through them with the, in the playoffs was LeBron James. This guy was looking in your mouth like right there and just calling it, it was telling the players exactly what was going to happen on the play that you call. And I remember. I don't, I don't know if I even told nobody other than my close circle. I remember it was um, it was a play we was trying to run, and one of our teammates forgot the play, and Brian told him the play. But I was also in the gym when I watched him on the floor against Toronto tell Patrick Patterson where he was supposed to go on the play they had called out of timeout late in the fourth quarter. He's like, no, Pat, you're supposed to stand over there, and you're going to pin down for DeMar over here. <laughs> wow that's that, hilarious that's who he is <laughs> like, it was some crazy shit it was some like it was some crazy stuff we called it a play he was like what and Brian told him what our play was you know and it just shows you like how locked in this dude be when it comes to that come the winning time man and, and you see it when he out there on both ends man but that change and you, you know this like we, we beat him a couple times when he was in Cleveland, he was not that way. I, I've never seen a change in a player. Uh, I knew we were in trouble in Miami uh, when we were coaching. When we, he was in Cleveland, he was just playing right, basketball. Right, right. We get to Miami, and he's in Miami now, and he's calling our plays out. He's staring over at our bench. Yeah. Uh, he's he's uh, he's reading stuff, and yeah. I remember saying, "Oh, oh this is not uh, this is not <laughs> good." Uh, you know, there there are a lot in. Dwayne brings it up. There's when you're drawing a play in a timeout, you know, as an opposing coach, that that one guy can can screw things up for you. I know you know the famous, you know, free throw, LeBron. Mm -hmm. You know the. So yeah. so, what did he say to you? And then, how did you like? How were you able to like maintain your focus? Well, you missed him. We respectful there, but like missed him. But like, how did you lose sight? Like for what you're trying to do, like make the free throw, and then. Uh, okay, so we have to back up a little bit right. because um, I was balling. Looking to inbound, Arenas puts up the three. Bang! Gilbert Arenas ties the game! And a timeout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, was, I was balling that fourth quarter, and we, it, miracle comeback, you know, um, down three. Um, I hit the uh, hit almost like a 30-footer to, to 
take us to overtime. Um, kind of got a little tired and you know in overtime, but got to the free throw line. You know, it's butter. Game's mm. over. We're up one. I'm about to hit these three. This is easy. And LeBron comes by and taps you on the chest and whispers something to you. What did What did he tell you? He said, "If you miss these free throws, you know who's going to win it." Mm. You know. And when he tapped me and he's like, you know, if you miss these, you know, that's game. And for that one second, I became human and thought about it. All right, now, what makes it, what makes it worse, what makes it worse is this. So because we gamble at LeBron's house, me, Damon Jones, you know, that was our group. Right. So Damon Jones was horrible, horrible. He was hor horrible, horrible at cards. <laughs> so he owed me money. So I always used to say, like every time we played them, I always used to scream out, <laughs> the landlord's hit. The landlord needs his rent money. Right. So that's, I'll, like every time we came to town, shoot around, I'm yelling it. The game, I'm yelling it. Like that's all I yell. So I told the coach, hey, anytime you put Damon Jones in, I'm going one for flat. He owes me money. Until he pays me my money, one for flat. He's gonna be a liability out on his court. And that's what I did every time he came in, one for flat. So they wasn't, so he stopped playing. So he doesn't even play in game six. So when he, when he whispers, you know who's gonna hit it, everybody assumed it was him. I knew what he was talking about. You know, and it, and it had me thinking about it. And